Hi there, Steve Arterburn here. Happy uh, Friday to you. That's when I'm recording this or doing this. And uh, I hope and pray that you're going to have a good weekend and be close to the folks that you love and give people a break and maybe have a little Friday evening meeting and say, let's make this this weekend count because it can. And, uh, and I hope that it'll be a good one for you. I'm uh, continuing with the uh, 10 ways that we can overcome all of our, our fears and, and our insecurities and anxiety. And today, uh, I'm coming to a word and I'm going to give you a great quote. And, and the concept that I want to talk to you about today is acceptance. And uh, I'm going to give you a quote in a minute that's powerful, but I want to show you where it comes from. I have a transcript. Uh, from the last um, talk that Dr. Bob, uh, who was the buddy, the friend, um, the co-founder, you could say, of AA with Bill Wilson, uh, Bill W. And uh, in this last transcript, uh, the transcript of the last talk that Dr. Bob ever gave, he says this about the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. He says, um, we didn't... Um, make them up. Uh, we didn't invent them. He said we discovered them. And he said that we discovered them in the good book. And he said especially 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, the Sermon on the Mount, especially, you know, the Beatitudes, and the book of James. Well, of course, if you know anything about the book of James, it just rings true with the 12 steps. For instance, James 5, 16, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other that you might be healed. Well, you know, in AA, uh, that's the place where people will um, reveal things that maybe they've never told anybody. And it's all about openness and honesty and confession. Bill W. and Dr. Bob, uh, they, they began their journey while they were involved with what were known as the Oxford Groups. And the Oxford Groups had four absolutes that they felt like you could uh, encapsulate all of the teachings of Christ in these four. Absolute honesty, absolute purity, absolute unselfishness, and absolute love. Well, uh, you know, Dave Stoop and I, uh, we took the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, we took the concepts, we took the principles, and what we did is we brought them all right back into the Bible in the form of the Life Recovery Bible. And anybody that is recovering, uh, there's no better gift to them than the Life Recovery Bible. Because they get to see that all of the things in the 12 steps truly are based on biblical principles. There's not one unbiblical thing in there. And people say, well, yeah, what about that higher power thing they talk about rather than Jesus? Well, you know, there are a lot of people that believe in Jesus, but they haven't accepted Christ as their higher power. I mean, they, they're going to go to heaven, but their ego is still in charge here. And a lot of people say, well, doesn't uh, AA replace the church for some people? Well, if there are only crummy churches, yes, but because there are life recovery groups and other Christian recovery groups, a lot of folks are in the church that would have never been in the church. And people say, well, why do you need 12 steps? Don't you just need to take one step? No. Uh, you accept Christ, but you need a growth program from there. You don't instantly have character. And the 12 steps are a great, wonderful uh, growth program. So you can get a Life Recovery Bible uh, at newlife.com or 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you're in prison, uh, contact prison fellowship through your chaplain but whenever any prisoner asks for a bible they'll give away a copy of the life recovery bible in either english and spanish it's also a pew bible for the salvation army it is a wonderful resource so one of the things that i love the most is i have a very big book of the original manuscript of the big book these are the uh, it's a copy of the actual notes that Bill W. sat down on a typewriter and hammered out and then the corrections that he made. And one of the interesting things I want to point out is when he wrote all of this, 
he would write things like this. You are in a position where life is becoming. And then he went back and changed everything from you to we and made it inclusive. Like I said, we were in a position. And so uh, it's just fascinating to see everywhere the word you, which is kind of a, a preachy approach, is replaced with an inclusive we. And the point I want to make is that we're all in this together. And he knew that. We're all fellow strugglers. It's just a question of are you faking it or not. And this 12-step this program has been used by so many other people for so many things. We developed a workbook for the Life Recovery Bible going through the 12 steps for grief, divorce, uh, depression, and uh, an eating disorder. So uh, sexual integrity. So there's a, there's a way to use these steps. They're powerful. But in the big book of AA, there is a quote uh, that, that I think is one of the most powerful quotes that relates to our concept today. The concept of overcoming fear and our anxiety through acceptance. In the big book, uh, Bill Wilson, he makes this very, very profound statement. And uh, anybody that is familiar with the big book, which, you know, the principles came out of the good book, they're, they're usually blown away uh, when they hear about this, this quote. And here it is. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. Now just think about that. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. If I can um, accept that we're in the midst of a crisis, then I can do my best to uh, protect myself from it. Uh, if I can accept that I'm weak in some area, then I can get the help that I need. If I can accept that God loves me, I might step out and do some things a little more courageously than if I, uh, if I don't. My job in the world of acceptance is to be responsible. My job is to, to see that whatever hand I've been dealt, a weak hand, I've got to play that hand, but a weak hand played well, uh, it, that, that goes pretty well many times when you're playing poker, but when God is helping me play my hand in life, you know, if I can accept his help and accept the challenge, I can do some great things in the midst of the worst of circumstances. Now, when the news of COVID-19 hit home, some people, you know, they had been through a divorce. Other people had just heard that they had a cancer diagnosis or they, they had lost their job. And you put that on top of a childhood of, of horror or neglect or abuse. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. And then there were people walking around shaming people saying, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. No, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But sometimes we, we're entitled to be afraid. And, and then we turn to God and we receive God's comfort. But what we want to do is that we want to accept that things may not go well, but accept that God's going to be there for us and comfort us. But this isn't what any of us had planned. None of us dreamed of this, I think. But now would be a great time. And say, God, just help me accept the reality before me. Help me be cautious, but not overly uh, obsessed with fear. Uh, God, help me accept your help in all of this and not reject you as I find a way to get through all of this. I just want to challenge you uh, to think about, meditate on what it is you need to accept. Is is acceptance of a person that's kind of difficult to be with? Is, is maybe that uh, the goal for today? Is that the kind of acceptance that you need to have? If so, do that. And just say to God, okay, God, I... I I surrender. I've been fighting. I've been denying. I've been angry. And now I'm just going to rest and accept that you're here for me. Accept that you're going to empower me to deal with whatever it is. And accept this. No matter how far from you I have been, you can restore me. And you want 
to restore me. To that end, I want to read you something. It's out of the, uh, the Restoration Bible. And throughout the Restoration Bible, um, I'm the general editor, I provided these restoration profiles to show how God works in a person's life. You could have a copy of this big, thick Restoration Bible for free simply by going to Steve Social at newlife.com and give me your address and I'll send it to you. Listen to this. This comes right out of John 41, I mean, I'm sorry, John 4, 1 through 43. She, she came to fill her water jug and probably avoid seeing anybody, but she left with her life brimming with living water and anxious to tell others. Her story represents the deeply personal and shockingly persistent nature of God's restoring work. As an aside, Jesus used the occasion of their conversation to teach some profound lessons on the nature of worship. His words led to transformation in her life throughout her village and countless lives and villages ever since. Jesus immediately affirmed the Samaritan woman's dignity by ignoring her gender, race, and questionable moral status and addressing her with a single request. Please give me a drink, John 4, 7. It may sound abrupt to modern ears, but the text includes no indication of tone. So stunned was the woman that Jesus acknowledged her in any way that she was drawn into conversation, curious about his offer of living water. In the exchange that followed, the woman did her best to avoid admitting why she was so thirsty for living water. But Jesus was relentless. When she questioned his qualification to offer better water than our father Jacob had, Jesus simply reasserted that his water led to eternal life. When she asked for the water, his response led her to answering with a half-truth about her marital status, which Jesus, he, he gently unmasked the half-truth. The woman deflected the shameful truth by shifting the conversation to popular religious arguments. And again, Jesus responded to her tactic by explaining that God would soon forever move beyond being one nation's God or limited to a certain geographical location. He was seeking worshipers ready to approach him in spirit and truth, no matter their racial background or country. The woman's restoration left her transparent. She ran and told the rest of the people back home that come see a man who told me everything that I could that I've ever done. Could this man be the Messiah? You know, when you come in contact with Jesus and his restoration power, you have to believe uh, that he is the Messiah, that he can save us from our sins. I am so grateful that in the midst of difficulty and struggle, when I just persevere, imperfectly persevere, that's what God has called me to do. I'm not going to do it perfectly. But he says, those, those that persevere receive the crown of life. Now, I know God wants to restore you. I don't care if you've lost your job, your health, people that you love. There's restoration available to you. There's a path in this Bible. I'd love to send it to you. Steve Social at newlife.com. There's a path that God wants you to be on. I'll close with this scripture. It says in Jeremiah 6, 16, Stop at the crossroads. Look around. Search for the old godly path. Walk in its steps. And you will find rest for your soul. Stop. Look around and find that path. It's found in God's Word. And I hope you'll get on it and stay on it, and you'll experience God and His love and His presence and His strength in everything that you do. Now, if you need some help, you be sure and call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE.